Good morning and welcome to the October seasonal outlook. My name is Musa Killink uh, from the Predictive Services at CFA. Um, so we're just going to start off um, by providing some some guidance around um, the products um, that you guys might be able to, to to have a look at your own time. So a good link is the Climate Dogs uh, website. So if you Google Climate Dogs, you should be able to um, see some um, some links to that website and, um, and it will pro provide you with some good guidance and um, interpretation of the products. The other good ones are anything to do with the Bureau of Meteorology, so Soil Moisture or Climate Outlook will also give you some good guidance. So in terms of today what we are going to talk about is um, the, the recent rainfall patterns over Victoria. Um, and then the current soil moisture conditions and try to relate that to the, uh, the, the fuel conditions on the ground. And then um, we're going to have a look at some of the, the forecast climate patterns and then followed by um, uh, looking at the, how that forecast climate relates to uh, past bushfire seasons. So just to start off with the, um, the Australian context, um, what we can see from this diagram is um, firstly that most of uh, eastern and northern Victoria as well as um, uh, the, sorry, um, most of eastern Australia as well as western Australia um, are currently under serious uh, rainfall deficiency uh, which basically means that if bushfires do occur in, in Victoria over a prolonged period um, then it's likely that we won't actually be able to rely on other states for for firefighting services um, and then on the right of the of the presentation is the um, the AFAC bushfire seasonal outlook which again reflects um, the current conditions and uh, bushfire seasonal forecast which is uh, pretty pretty dominant along the, the east coast of Australia. So what we can have see from this diagram is the recent rainfall patterns over Victoria. So starting from the bottom, um, so that's looking at the last six months and as we go to the top of those images that's looking at the last month over September. What we can see from these diagrams is that there's quite a large rainfall deficit over most of Victoria over the last six months which has expanded over the last three months and then into the last month where rainfall patterns have been quite consistently low over most of northern, eastern, central Victoria. But what we can see is that over the last month that continued dryness has gone over um, west and southwest Victoria as well where the essentially showing that over western and southwestern Victoria there are uh, record low um, rainfall patterns um, which essentially means that it's on the um, historical low um, period. So <coughs> what the diagram also shows is that um, September was the second lowest uh, month of rainfall over the last 100 years uh, which is quite significant. So. If we have a look at the, um, the soil moisture conditions over um, a current period, so this is October 4th, again, it really shows the underlying dryness um, caused by rainfall deficits over most of Victoria. So the information is presented again as um, deciles where the red or maroon colour is lowest on record, whereas the, the blue is highest on record. Um, over Victoria, most of the um, soil moisture deficits are at the very much below to record lows, um, meaning that the soil moisture is quite low, which is affecting the, the vegetation growth, especially at the understory, meaning that, that the fuels um, in the understory vegetation are becoming drier and more available to burn. Um, the, other prominent features from this, uh, from this diagram is that the Mal well, outer Melbourne and Barbara Otways um, is showing significant drying trends 
um, which is a cause for concern. So in the next diagram, um, we've zoomed into um, the Otways region, and, and again, looking at the, the root zone soil moisture, which is the depth of soil moisture to one metre. Um, what this diagram shows is, um, a, a, I guess, a comparison between uh, the 2015-16 season at the bottom and the uh, 2018 year. Um, and, and if we remember in 2015, on December 25th, um, there was a wide river fires, which was caused by um, a very sudden uh, shift in, in drying during the September, October, November period, which essentially uh, the, the root zone moisture collapsed, um, which caused the underlying vegetation to uh, become fully available. Um, currently, the same thing has happened again, where there has been a very sudden um, decline in soil moisture, and we'll need to really follow uh, the soil moisture as well as the rainfall patterns over the next couple of months to have a look at the signals to see if um, the Otways uh, regions will be become available to burn again. Um, um, and in terms of looking at the, the long range temperature and, and rainfall patterns, so this is the, the Bureau of Meteorology forecast, again what we can sort of see from these diagrams, so looking at the bottom, so that's temperature, um, the, the forecast is for higher daytime temperatures uh, on average um, over October as well as November. Um, and, the, um, and, and, and I guess the, uh, the chance of this occurring is quite high. So there is quite a uh, high uh, model confidence in, in the temperature uh, forecast. In terms of rainfall, again, um, during October where the model confidence is high, uh, much drier uh, conditions forecast uh, throughout Victoria, especially over uh, the southwest as well as um, the central highlands of Victoria. So again, um, a bit of a cause for concern over the Otways and central highlands, especially if these drying trends continue. Um, if we have a look at the El Nino, so we're trying to understand or un unpack some of those climate signals. So what the global climate models have forecast um, uh, an increasing likelihood of El Nino occurring, um, especially over um, early summer to late summer period. So the El Nino hasn't really um, activated yet, but the forecast is that it will activate um, with high likelihood with nearly all um, climate models globally uh, signifying a high chance of El Nino conditions. So what El Nino essentially means is that um, typically it is associated with uh, lower rainfall patterns over southeast Australia. Um, in terms of the Indian Ocean Dipole, so that's the other large um, climate influencer in, in Australia, especially southeast Australia. Um, and so what's happened over the last month is that the Indian Ocean Dipole has turned positive. Um, which again was forecast by uh, the global climate models. Um, what, what this has caused is a, a, again a drying trend over much of um, Victoria, which is, I, I guess was associated with um, the, the low rainfall patterns over Victoria. Um, so I, I guess the reason for that was the, the change in pressure patterns over uh, interior Australia, which has essentially um, decreased the chance of rainfall triggers over Victoria. Um, but with the Indian Ocean Dipole, um, it's not likely to last beyond summer, so that's when um, the, the subtropical systems will really fire up and decrease um, any further enhancement of the positive Indian Ocean Dipole. Um, when we compare the, the current season with past season, so this graph essentially shows um, a, a hundred, well, essentially 100 years worth of um, uh, seasonal data um, that's been linked with uh, really bad bushfire season. So the examples that we have here um, is really around the severe forest fire um, season. So that's the green um, dash line. 
And the, the black line is essentially where we're currently at, and the dashed black line is what the forecast is from the Bureau of Meteorology. Um, so over the next three months, the forecast is, uh, in terms of bushfire seasons, is that it's likely to be in line with, um, uh, with the, the, the worst seasons that we've um, encountered in southeast Australia. Um, I guess there is still some uncertainty behind this, um, so it really depends on what happens in terms of rainfall patterns over October and November, but because the, the forecast for, for rainfall is quite low from the Bureau of Meteorology, it is likely something like that will eventuate, which will essentially mean that it will be a, a major or a serious bushfire season in Victoria. Um, in terms of um, issues or, or risks to consider um, over Victoria, um, remembering that in, in August or early September, um, the, the bushfire seasonal outlook map had East Gippsland as above average. Um, now, again, depending on what the rainfall patterns look like um, over October, it is likely that um, the above average um, forecast for the bushfire season outlook is likely to be extended um, beyond East Gippsland, perhaps to um, uh, out of Melbourne, maybe all the way up to, to the Otways, again just depending on what that rainfall pattern looks like. Um, <clears throat> so during um, September, again as we observed um, record low rainfalls over much of Victoria, especially Gippsland again. So the, the messaging over Gippsland is that if we do get lightning activity, it is likely to cause um, campaign level fires, which were experienced during 2006-07 or 2002-2003 seasons. Um, the other considerations is really around the, um, the fire danger period. Because of the low rainfall patterns over uh, that has occurred over September and likely to occur over October. Um, really need to start thinking about declaration of fire danger periods and preparation um, of and around houses um, by by communities. Um, so to ensure that the preparedness levels are, are right as we approach the season. All right, that's all from me. Um, and next month in November, we will be giving another seasonal outlook. Thanks.